Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be going over the basics of looking at an Abacus uh, output database file, also known as an ODB file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to open Abacus and our window is going to pop up that's going to give us our licensing information and then once the license server is contacted and the license is accessed we have Abacus CAE. So here we are. I'm going to maximize it and the first thing that we can notice is if we go to the open file um, we look we don't have any ODBs here because the file filter is set to CAE we can switch it to ODB and then we can see the ODB that we're actually looking for here um, but in Abacus uh, there's usually multiple ways to do anything and so uh, in our case what we're also going to look at here is we have the model tab up here and we have the results tab over here so if we click on the results tab and we can also grab onto this and make it a little bit wider uh, we can look at output databases here click on it right click and click open and then we see the same window here and output database is already our file filter so let's go ahead and open our model uh, or actually our output database my apologies uh, so the first thing we can see our entire model here um, and the area we're looking at is actually up in here and so we're going to zoom in by scrolling with the mouse wheel uh, and one of the things that we can notice right away is that our mesh is very fine and it gets in the way of seeing anything behind it so one of the first things we're going to do here is we're going to go to options common and there we're going to do feature edges and if we hit apply you can see that takes away the mesh uh, all edges includes the mesh, exterior edges includes the mesh, but feature, free, uh, we could do no edges and that just takes away the outline around this. Uh, my preference is feature edges, so we're going to click OK on that. Uh, and now if we actually want to view the results, uh, where we're going to click here is we see our results pattern over something that's deformed. It says plot contours on deformed shape. If we actually click and hold on this, we can see that we can plot contours on the undeformed shape as well, uh, but we're going to choose plot contours on deformed shape. Um, and instantly it's going to give us our von Mises result and take us all the way to the end of the analysis. Uh, so the question is, how do we navigate around the analysis to the results we want? Uh, first with the toolbars here, where we see these dots, we can use these to move around individual toolbars. So I'm going to grab this one here and put it, well, I guess it works a little bit there. Put it there, I'm going to grab this one here and I'm going to put it here. Uh, we can slide the rest of these in as well. Um, and what you see here is you see some forward and backward arrows that will take us through the time steps. Uh, then for results, uh, you see our actual variable results. Uh, and then underneath those are specific components of those results. So right now S is for stress and we're looking at von Mises stress. And we should be at the end of the analysis. And if we look, we can see our increment uh, and our step time here. Uh, and our step. So the remove step for us is the second step uh, and the step time there is uh, 10,000. Uh, so if we click on this arrow here we'll go back to uh, the beginning of the same step uh, and then we can't click through anymore if we go back one frame we get to the indent step and then we can click back through but we can use these to click through and right now we're watching the indent step uh, as I individually click through it and we'll do an animation shortly but again we're still looking at stress and the von Mises stress as our result uh, let's see also the other thing that we can do here is if we expand our output databases we expand the output database that we're interested in here that we're looking at uh, we can tell that it's being displayed because it's underlined uh, here I can go into steps and so I can go to indent uh, at the end of that step I can go to to remove and like I said before usually there's two or three ways of doing anything in Abacus um, so let's take a look a little bit closer at uh, a result that we might be interested in uh, so instead of our von Mises stress uh, let's go and take a look at our hoop stress which would be S33 and we can see that there so that's a primary stress 
Uh, and we can click through. This is our shear stress here. Um, and you'll notice that sometimes the colors don't line up very well. Uh, that's because we have a concentration that throws off our overall scale. Uh, and we'll take a look at how to deal with that in one second here. So let's look at our fully loaded condition. Uh, here we are. We can look right here as we see this material overlapping itself. Our results probably aren't accurate and we need to redo this model with some different parameters uh, in order to make it more accurate, but it's still good enough to take a look at how we access our output database. Uh, so the next thing we're going to look at here is we're going to click on our contour options. Uh, and when we look at our contour options, the place we're going to go over to next is we're going to go over to our limits. Uh, and for our limits, they typically auto-compute. Uh, but sometimes what comes in handy is we're only interested in positive results. And so we make zero. Uh, let's see. There we go. Forgot to hit the number lock. Uh, we hit zero. Um, and so this is more appropriate, say, for if we go to uh, our Mises stress, we can see uh, zero at the bottom there a little more clearly. Uh, we can also do that looking for positive stress in the hoop direction. Uh, so we can see where our highest hoop stress is here. Uh, we can also do it in the vertical direction, which we don't see much tension in the vertical direction, of course, because we're compressing, compressing down. So instead, what we can do is we can do auto compute there. Uh, we can do zero as our ceiling. And this is our compression uh, that we can see here. Uh, let's go back and auto compute that one there. And this, of course, is our radial stress. Uh, so that's stress in the 1, 1 direction. And when we look at the numbers 1, 2, and 3, what we are looking at there is we're looking at x, y, and z as 1, 2, and 3. And then, of course, 1, 2 is our shear. And because this is an axisymmetric analysis, uh, we don't have uh, any other shear components uh, due to asymmetry. So now let's go take a look at our plastic equivalent strain uh, as an option here. And this one is another good one to have a, a floor of 0. Um, but here, uh, what we can see is we can't really see the contours very well uh, because of a high concentration at this point down here. Uh, so what we can do now is we can specify, instead of 2, let's try specifying 1. And that looks a little bit better there. We can see a little bit more of where our plastic equivalent strain is. And if we go even lower, one of the things that we can uh, note right away that we saw earlier, I think, with the black, but here in gray, is when we're beyond whatever limit we've set, gray is on the high side and black will be on the bottom side of our limit. Uh, and if we want to access this at a different time, let's zoom out a bit, we can go frame by frame in our results. Um, and if we'd like to see an animation of our results, then we can go to animate time history. And this is the animation of our results into the options and animation options. We can speed up or slow down this animation uh, to help us visualize what's happening. And we can always just turn the animation off here and it'll leave us in the frame we're in, but we can navigate around using different means to get to wherever we want to go. Uh, in terms of our animation. Uh, and that should sum up the basics of accessing our output database. Our time controls are up here with our arrows and over here. I can expand this one as well and access every individual frame I choose. And then our, our actual output variables are accessible here. Uh, and peak does not have any sub output variables. Before we go, I'm going to do one more here. Uh, let's look at the contact normal force between the two. And as you can see, it's only applicable here. Uh, and so instead of just having a color and this form here, uh, what we can do is we can change it to a symbol. 
and with the symbol now we can get our arrows that show us the magnitude of our contact force and we can clearly see our contact force is highest here on the outside as opposed to the inside uh, and that may just have to do with radial distance and area and pressure so let's take a look and see if we can find uh, pressure here uh, we find it right there and so if we look at our contact pressure and we do auto compute there uh, actually we do see that our contact pressure does appear to be higher uh, at the outside as well uh, and actually that just changed it when I went from the symbol uh, it changed it to the normal force uh, because it definitely doesn't want to express the pressure as a symbol and so we can look at our pressure results here instead for contact uh, and back of course to stress which is most likely what we're interested in and of course we see our stress concentration uh, but as we look here we see that this analysis is not quite valid and we should try again and that's all I have for now